Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, and I'll be reading verses 11 through 19. And the, the he that's being spoken of here is Jesus. This is what it says. And it came about that while he was on the way to Jerusalem, that he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And it came about that as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Were none found who turned back to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, we give you thanks. We have an opportunity to brush up close to you, to a day set apart that we might hear your voice and know your touch. Thank you for it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mark Twain, at the height of his career, was earning what was at that time an incredible sum of $5 a word writing for Harper's Weekly. Well, some jokester sent him a letter and said, Dear Mr. Twain, please find and close the envelope $5. Could you send me a good word? <laughs> Mark Twain took the $5 and on a single sheet of paper he wrote the word thanks and mailed it back to the man. Well, thanks is a good word. Thanks is, is a wonderful word. Thanks is a word that, well, it's more than just what we feel. It's just more than what we think. It's what made the difference here in this story right here, that word of gratitude, that word of thanks. Jesus and his disciples, it tells us we're between Samaria and Galilee. Well, that's code for they were in the middle of nowhere. There was, it, it, it was the boondocks. And they, they came upon ten leprous men is what it tells us. Now, if anyone had leprosy, law required them to leave their families, to leave their villages, to leave their cities. And these ten men found a, a place together with one another. The law required that, that they warn people, that they put their hand over their mouth and, and shout unclean if anyone got within shouting distance of them. Well, Jesus and his disciples did get within shouting distance. We don't know whether they shouted unclean, but we do know that they shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In other words, don't you care? And Jesus shows the heart of God. He says, show yourselves to the priests. And that's what they did. And it tells us that as they were going, that they weren't healed immediately at the sound of Jesus' voice. It was as they were going, step by step. It tells us that they were, they were cleansed. But one turned back. 
one turned back to give thanks. And, and now we've got a story. It's not just that Jesus has power to, to, to heal and to cleanse, but the, the one turned back was the one recognized for his faith. And gratitude is the language of faith. Gratitude is the language of, of the believer. And that's what this story is about this morning. Lisa Truett er, Irby from Cleveland, Tennessee, tells a story about a time when she was teaching a child how to read. The little girl was six years old, and she was struggling through different words, and, and Lisa would help her out a little, and, and so the little girl could figure out the words herself. Well, she had never seen the words, thank you, and read them out loud. So she came to the words, thank you, and she stopped right there. And Lisa, trying to help her out a little bit, said, thank. And the little girl didn't say anything. Again, she said, thank. And the little girl still didn't keep trying to read. She said, thank. And the little girl said, I am thanking, I am thanking. <laughs> no matter what your accent is, thanking and thinking are not the same thing. So often, we believe that it is, that as long as we, we kind of feel thankful, that that's the same as being thankful. But that's why we have a story right here, because it is not the same. I'm certain the other nine were thankful. They just didn't show. They didn't demonstrate. They didn't act on their gratitude. It's that, it's that, that act of thanks. That's the language of faith. It's that demonstration of, of thanks that's the language of faith. That it's not no, enough just to, to think it. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. And the first thing that I want to talk about is give thanks where you are. Sarah Brethnock, in her little book, Simple Abundance, tells about a time in her life when she was angry. She was a workaholic. She was a perfectionist. And she would compare herself to others and anything in her that she thought was lacking, she would, she would get bitter and resentful. Well, one day it hit her that things needed to change. She couldn't keep on going this way. So she began to, to write down all the things that she was thankful for. She wrote down over 150 things, page after page after page after page, things that she was thankful for. Well, that, her, her life didn't change all at once, but she knew she was knocking on the right door. So then she began to, to thank God every day, just five things that she would write down. She did it one day and then the next, and then the next, and then the next. And it was that act, that demonstration of faith, that practice of giving thanks, that the anger turned into gratitude, that the perfectionism turned into praise, and that the, the competitiveness turned into wholehearted worship, that you and I were, were made, we were made to give thanks and praise, to give gratitude to God. And we're incomplete without it. It's not enough just to, to think. We're called to give thanks right where we are. The Apostle Paul, in Colossians 3.17, he says, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him through God the Father. He says, whatever you do in word or deed, not whatever you think, Whatever might happen, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him through God the Father. Give thanks right where you are. And the second thing that I want to talk about this morning, give thanks where you've been. Years ago, my sister and her family lived in Scotland for a year. Her husband it was a Fulbright scholar, and the whole family lived in Scotland. And my sister, being very musical, she would take her girls to the nursing home, and she would play piano, and her girls would sing. Well, oftentimes the people in the nursing home would sing along with them, and they really enjoyed doing that for the, the people there at the nursing home, and the people in the nursing home seemed to enjoy it too. One time my sister said that they had finished a song, and at the end of the song, someone from the back of the room 
yelled, spam. Well, she wasn't sure if that was a request or just exactly what was happening. So she turned to the nurse, and the nurse just shrugged. She didn't know what the woman meant. So the woman started coming toward her, and she said, spam, you gave us spam. You're an American, you gave us spam. That's when the nurse told her, said, oh, this woman lived during World War II. And the times in Scotland were very harsh, very cruel times. And it was the Americans, the Americans airlifting cans of meat, spam, that helped her survive and many other people. She was just thanking you. Well, it wasn't that my sister needed to hear the words, that the woman needed to speak the words, that they needed to be they needed to be expressed. There needed to be a, a demonstration of the thanks there. Now, think about it. World War II was a time of hardship. It was a time of, of bitterness. It was a time of suffering. And so often we, we get to, to looking at our past and we see only the bad things and the, the hardship and the suffering. But Hebrews 2.18 says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. That yes, we're tempted to look at our suffering and see only bad and evil. God doesn't change our past, but he certainly can change the way that we look at it. Even amidst the suffering and the heartache, to be able to give thanks. Paul he knew what it was like to be beaten. He knew what it was like to be shipwrecked. He knew what it was like to be crushed by stones. He knew what it was like to be imprisoned. And it was from prison, from prison. In Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus doesn't change the past, but he certainly can change the way that we look at it. That even looking back where we've been, we can give thanks to God. Even looking back in the heartache and the hard time, we can know that Jesus has a power in, in you and me where we can give thanks. Give thanks where you've been. Give thanks where you are. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is give thanks along the way. Barbara Schulis in Christian Century wrote an article about a time in her life when she was battling cancer. And while she was battling cancer, she said it was during this time more than ever she could identify with the ten leprous men. And this is what she writes. She says, When chemotherapy causes your hair to fall out, robs you of your energy, and fills your mouth with canker sores, you begin to develop empathy with the lepers. There's no hiding the fact that you're diseased. Your cancer walks into the room before you do. And people who know better still flinch as they did before the lepers who were made to live outside the community, who had to beg for survival. And then later when she was healed, she said she began to be able to identify with the 10th leper. And she said, like the 10th leper, I never want to lose sight of the miracle of God's grace. Being grateful as I wake into the gift of each day is the key. She, says, she, goes, she goes on to say that gratitude is the purest measure of one's character and spiritual condition. Gratitude is the purest measure of one's character and spiritual condition. Jesus has power to do what you and I can't. It may be that you're in that place that's a hard and a difficult place, and you know it. And it's hard to come by gratitude. We turn to Jesus Christ. Because on the cross, he took all those things that would destroy us. He took the bitterness that can sometimes be crushing. He took resentment. He took sin. He took death. He took all the things that would destroy us. And he nailed it to the cross to take away its power. And when he rose from the grave, he gave you and me power over all those things. All those things that would destroy us. That all along the way, we have a new, newfound power to give thanks. 
to give praise. Because it's that thanks and praise that's the language of faith. This morning, it may be that uh, you are in a hard time, a difficult time. And you know you need the power of the risen Christ. He rose from the grave to live his, his life through, through you and through me. And I want to pray with you now that you receive that power this day. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, this day, this day, give us a glimpse, a handhold of gratitude to you. You've poured incredible riches around us, but sometimes our, our eyes are only quickened to see what we don't have or to see bitterness, to see what someone didn't do or to see what others aren't doing. Jesus, grant grace, grace enough where the words of our mouths are words of gratitude, of praise, of worship, of pointing our hearts to you by what we do, by our acts, by our demonstration of faith and gratitude. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.